everyone, I have three brushes that I absolutely cannot wait to tell you about. These are brushes that I picked up from my local arts and crafts store. It's called Michael's. Don't know if you've heard of it. What I was really looking for and why I really wanted to go and was eager to go is because I was looking for a defining crease brush. Something that could really get into this crease here and put concentrated amount of color. The brush that I've been using most for my crease brush in the past months has been my Sigma E40 brush. This is a well-known brush, very popular. If you don't have this one, you probably have some sort of variation of it. Um, it just looks like this. It is quite fluffy and it does work really well with creating a gradient, with blending out color, with making sure there's no harsh lines. Um, and I really do like it. I have nothing bad to say about this besides the fact that it's too big if I want to really define my crease area. If I want to put a cut crease in there, if I want to put a really dark, smoky color in there, this is just going to blend the color too much to where I'm not going to get that defined line that I'm looking for. Um, and so that's why I went to Michael's in the first place. And what I found amazed me, like truly, Leaving the store, I knew that I was going to fall in love with the three brushes that I picked up, and I absolutely have. I have included these into my makeup routine every single day. Every single day, whether I needed to or not, I reach for these brushes, and I hope that you can get something out of this and maybe go to Michael's yourself and see what they have. The defining crease brush that I picked out is this one. Now this is going to be kind of hard for me to explain what exact kind of got because the numbers here, like in the names, are kind of weird. So this is what this one says, take it for what you will. There's a number six on it, then there's the word scrumbler on it, then there's what seems to be the brand, which is Artist's Loft, and Marseille. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. But this is what this is what it looks like. It is a very small tapered blood brush and it is very dense. Um, and it's absolutely phenomenal for defining the crease. Let me just show you the difference here between these two brushes. So here we have the E40. We're going in there, we're wanting to define a crease, right? Look at the difference in size, just size alone, let alone the shape of the bristles and the density of the bristles. I mean, look at the size difference. This is going, the one with the red handle here is going to do the job. Um, I am absolutely amazed. I'm amazed with the quality. I am floored by the price. This was under $5. Um, I'm sorry that I do not have like the receipt in front of me to where I can tell you it was $3.99 or what it was, but I know it was not more than $5. I am blown away. I really am. This fits in my crease and you can see I used it today like for this exact dark, dark brown color that I have in there and it just works perfectly. And then I can go in this one with this and like blend it out and it just, it's a must have. It is absolute must have if you need a brush like this or if you're frustrated because the brush that you already have is a little too big, maybe that you wanna save some money, in which case who doesn't and go there and get that anyways. Um, I also like that I didn't have to Sigma, obviously you have to order online, which I'm not trying to say anything bad about Sigma at all, but it was nice that I could go to Michael's, which if you live in the U.S., they're practically everywhere, and I was able to go there, and I was able to feel it, and I was able to look and decide for myself, like, you know, what is really going to work for me? So it was nice that I was able to do that. Um, the other two I got simply not because I necessarily needed them, but really because I thought, why not? Let's see what else they have. The next brush that I got is actually a brush that I don't have anything to compare it to, but I just thought it would be an absolute perfect um, brush for putting color like on the very outer corner if I really want to pack color there or even going underneath and doing something here on my lower lash line which is exactly what I've been using it for most. This one looks like this. So it's very short and dense and has light hairs. Um, this brand, this is what it says. One quarter 
low Cornell 270 Maxine's mop. So anyways, this is what it looks like. It has a violety purple handle. I will type all the names in the description bar, so maybe if you want to pull this video up while you're in Michaels, if you want to get these exact brushes, you can try to, you know, figure it out that way. But anyways, this is what it looks like. This is absolutely perfect. The bristles are very dense, and it's just so perfect for smudging out liner. It just it's, it has worked really well, and again, something that I've been using every day. And the last one that I got is something that I thought would work well as just a regular eyeshadow brush, like a shader brush. The brush that I currently have is a large shader brush. This is the E60 from Sigma. Now, clearly in the name it says large, so what was I expecting? And I'm completely fine with the size of it. It works well for packing on color, but I kind of wanted to see, you know, maybe if I wanted to concentrate the color just on the center of my eye or just on the outer half. Would this brush really be able to do that to the capacity that I'm looking for? Probably not. I would probably prefer a smaller brush to be a little more detailed. And the brush that I picked up to do that and have been very pleased with is this one. This also says a quarter inch low Cornell AMM mini mop. And it looks like this. It has like a dark green handle. And this is what the actual brush looks like. It's very soft and has been working really well, not only to pack on color, but also because it's not incredibly stiff to where it's like not malleable or anything. I'm able to pack on color and then turn it to the side and even blend out the color like this, if I so choose. Let me show you the size difference to these two, and you tell me which one I would be able to get a more precise application with. Obviously the smaller one that's right here with the green handle. Um, so again, not trying to say anything negative to Sigma, but it's a little more, it's a little smaller. It fits my eye better. I know that it would fit a lot of people's eyes better than, you know, these two brushes. And not only that, but each of these brushes were under $5. So I spent less than $15 on three brushes which I believe is around how much I spent for this one brush. Still a great brush, still one that I would recommend, still one that if I lost it, I would wanna repurchase it, but I would probably go to Michael's first to see maybe I can get it for a cheaper price. So not only do you have a good quality brush that does you know, what it's supposed to do, what you're looking for, but it's at a cheaper price point and you can also go there and like I said, be able to feel it, be able to play with it and see, well, the texture of this one would work well for this or this is the, what I'm looking for. You're kind of just using your own um, judgment on what is going to work well. I am very happy with these. I would absolutely recommend them or some variation of them. Um, if you're somebody that is on a budget or just curious about makeup brushes, I would definitely go check Michael's or another arts and crafts store. Let me know down below if you guys have had any luck with this, if you've ventured out and looked on your own. Um, I would love to know what other kind of brushes are out there that maybe I should try next time I'm around at Michael's. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.